Greetings Samurai, welcome to the video today. Today we will be talking about my first complete build in Neo 2, the very powerful Switch Glaive and Onmyo Magic build called Genma. You don't know what a Genma is? Then maybe my friend you should visit the old Capcom Classics, a series called Onimusa back in the day. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Let's get on with the build. So, as you can see, my very beautiful wife here is level 236. You do not need to be 236. We'll start from the very basics. The very basics meaning the equipment we should be using. Now, this build can go three ways. First and foremost, you will need to use a Yasakani Magatama if you want to pull it off to its out peak perfection, like the best possible damage you can get, the best possible utility you can get. To get the Yasakani Magatama, you have to beat Way of the Strong, you have to beat the final boss in Way of the Strong. So let's say we do not have the Yasakani Magatama, I'm gonna swap it for something else. For this Magadama right here, for example. So, without the Yasakani, we can only go Switch Glaive if we want Switch Glaive as our main weapon. And our second weapon must be a great Kanemitsu, the Odachi. We can use whatever we want when it comes to range, whatever we want when it comes to a helmet, and our set should be the Onmyo. Austerity, the Onmyo Warriors set. Now what are we getting out of this? We're getting 25 Onmyo Magic Power, we're getting better Devastating Rush, that is the Odachi skill where you just hold triangle and you dash forward dealing good damage and even better damage this way. We're getting reduced enemy attack when we hit them with any Onmyo skill. And we get an A- bonus to our overall damage by wearing the whole set. Now, if we go without Yasakani, that is the worst out of our three scenarios, we are very free to experiment with the helmet. The Trident Vajra Sword Helmet is very, very nice. It increases your attack whenever you purify. Very, very good. You can go with a Kodama Ball to increase the Kodama Blessings if you want to improve your chances of getting gear or getting more Amrita and so on and so forth. You can go an Enra Mask that will give you Life Drain with your Fire Attack scaling to A or really anything you like as long as you can wear it by staying in the green. Agility rating B that is. Down here is something I want you to pay attention to. Indicates your resistance to key damage and to being staggered by attacks. We want this to be 200 at least. Okay, so because most of our gear is medium armor, this will have to stay to 200. You might have to sacrifice a perk on or two to get some toughness on your armor, but by using the correct pieces, you will have you will be able to have it at 200 easily. The Onmyo Austerity set itself is quite heavy, so you're gonna be fine. So we're getting all the bonuses from here. The stat split, as you can see, you will want to go to around 60 magic if you wanna build this below level 200. And what I can tell you, uh, you will be fine with de facto is 15 dexterity 10 skill 40 heart because that is the soft cap 25 courage also the soft cap and around 18 to 20 stamina according to what you're wearing constitution will give you more hp strength will give you some leeway with your armor and will increase your effectiveness with the Odachi if you use the Odachi as your main weapon. It is very much possible to do so, 
but you will have to optimize your strength as soon as possible now you see with this setup here i'm having an attack rating or my seething dragon of 1924 and it is still plus plus seven, 170 plus seven which is very suboptimal like i can get three more levels on this and i can get my magic to 99 and i can tell you you can go above 2000 damage very very easily with this weapon and these stats so we're looking at a build that has 2000 attack power has grade a toughness as you can see here and it also boasts 660 on mio magic power and 35 slots to slot jutsu in okay we're not done yet this is our worst case scenario let's say now that we have a yasakani magatama okay that frees up our weapon slot or if we want to go with the weapon the kanemitsu it frees up one armor slot as you can see i'm still getting the full benefit now use warrior of the west bow in this case to get extra health and raven wind rifle to get life drain on bullseye both of these will help you very much we're going gonna go in depth with the perks on our primary ranged weapon a bit later we're gonna focus on the armor and our melee for the time being so let's say if we want we're adamant about having a switch glaive as our melee weapon our primary melee weapon the only way we can get this done is we keep the seething dragon here okay if we take off great kanemitsu we can put here Atagi Sadamune from the Crossed Sickles from the Kingo set. Okay. Now we're missing a perk on our Onmyo Warriors. We put it on and we have everything from the Onmyo Warriors set. And we have Fortified Life from Kingos and we have 45 Final Blow Damage. And that 10% we're talking when we're talking about thousands of damage is a lot we're gonna get other bonuses other minute bonuses from other pieces and other skills and from other things but when it comes to the main gear this is very very nice to have let's say that we do not need to have a switch glaive as our main weapon and we like a uh, great kanemitsu we like odachi or we like atagi sadamune we like katana okay the single blades then we can go to any of these pieces okay granted we have a helmet here because the onmi austerity set does not have a helmet we are free to use whatever helmet we want so we go with kingos and out of those four i chose to swap my gauntlets put on kingos and now we have plus four percent melee damage more health more final blow damage more melee damage and the whole benefits from the onmyo austerity set this is devastating guys this way you're using one and a half sets worth of perks you have a toughness you're as tough as it gets in order not to get interrupted you have a ton of defense i've not even maxed my familiarity and i'm sitting at 2200 here as you can see on the bottom right and you will also have a ton of hp you'll be nearing let's say 4000 i'm gonna tell you if you are of significantly lower level than i am right now let's say 3500 is a lot of hp now you see my damage here is kind of shit but that's because I haven't invested on uh, Kanemitsu or Sadamune at all because I do not use them as primaries. Like I just have them there to complete the sets. My Seeding Dragon is stronger, but if I invest in these weapons, I will have even higher damage output. 
Now for the perks on the equipment itself for our Switch Glaive, if you're gonna use one, I suggest Seething Dragon. Seething Dragon comes out of the box with Corruption and faster key recovery whenever an enemy is killed. That's 40%, that's a very, very good percentage. You want to do two things on this. You want to roll Attack Bonus Magic on it. Okay, that's very, very important. It's important that you temper to get Attack Bonus Magic. A video on tempering will be in the description below, so you know how to do that. Any perks you like here, doesn't really matter, as long as they're optimized for your playstyle. And then you want to go and remodel. Give me a second. You're gonna go and remodel. So you are sitting on specialization 3 that is optimized for drawing bonuses from your magic because this build is magic oriented. So this is our sitting dragon for the rest of our weapons. Great Kanemitsu, as you see, I'm missing two perks because I never used it as a main. I just rolled around uh, its perks a bit to see what I could get. Attack bonus on your strongest stat, but I really suggest you get strength in here and you also remodel it for strength. Okay, the rest is up to you, as I said before. And for our single blade, attack bonus heart is the best. And then you can remodel it to get a larger bonus from heart as well and optimize it. But as I said, it will probably be there just for the set bonus. You're not gonna use it. Maybe you like single blades and you want to go and invest in heart after you finalize your magic. That's totally up to you. I'm giving you the recap of the build. What's more standardized is the gear perks though. Okay. What we want to have here is inherited attack from gloves on all our pieces. I have a build on soul matching linked in the description below explaining how you can inherit and how you can transfer perks from piece to piece. On one piece of your leg gear, either the boots or the waist guard, you want to have faster winded recovery and tenacity. This is because you do not have want to have them split and each time you want to switch one of them you'll have to re-roll the perk on the new piece of equipment. Just put both of them on the same piece and you'll be done with it. And what we want to have here is primary untouch on Mio Magic, secondary on Mio Magic power and then we roll with equipment drop rates, item drop rates and any elemental resistance we can get. Okay, running speed as I see here is a nice touch. Reduction in key consumption when you sprint or when you dodge are also nice. Item drop rates will greatly improve your chances of getting smithing texts and you wanna get those to be able to craft whatever gear you want. Well, equipment drop rate will increase your chances of getting equipment. Okay, so you can see pretty much the same things here. Same here, I have a very nice elemental damage taken here as well as a life recovery when I gain Amrita and this will tie in nicely with our clan, the Togyotomi clan that returns health whenever you absorb Amrita. And that's pretty much it. So this is the armor and I'm gonna go straight to the accessories especially our Yasakani, we want to have one accumulation on fire, lightning or water and one type of damage, water, lightning or fire again. That is because of the soul cores that we will be using, so do not forget that. I also have a very nice life drain on Mio Magic Hit AAA Plus, not as hard to roll as you might imagine, and equipment drop rate you can temper your accessories exactly the same way as your gear. Don't forget that you can get perfect accessories this time around. Very, very important. 
The second one I would suggest is a comp. Each one of the accessory types has a specific pool of perks that you can use. Not everything can roll with everything. So from here we're going to get on your magic power again. Damage over time is good, but not necessary. That goes with what you're using weapon-wise. Like if I was using more fiery magic, that would be nice. Well, you can use whatever you want. Your onmyo will be devastatingly strong. But I'm gonna suggest the spells to use anyway. Equipment drop rate, overall luck, and the Amrita Gauge charge 11.6% massive is its static. So this is the gear. Whenever you wanna check something out, I'm gonna go from top to bottom right now so you can just pause the vid and see and get what you want seething dragon for our primary ranged the primary is the one that goes on the top slot equipment drop rate item drop rate one damage bonus based on anything but equipment lightness and agility because your agility is B equipment lightness is out of the question because your armor is heavy enemy skill is good familiarity is good use whatever else you want helmet alternate helmet chest piece Kingos or on me a warrior waist guard boots accessory one accessory two okay now on to the guardian spirits our primary is gembu gembu has detracted attack but massively increased defense and holds 24 slots. We're gonna be using Ryomen Sukuna, Otakemaru, and the Karakas Umbrella, or whatever you can spare a 4 core consumption on. That's because Ryomen Sukuna and Otakemaru use dual or triple elements. Otakemaru uses all elements, and Ryomen Sukuna uses two elements. Whenever you use Ryomen Sukuna on an enemy repeatedly, your water and fire accumulation or straight damage from your perks and your accessory will almost always put them in a confused state. Otakemaru on the other hand, especially for big enemies, is devastatingly strong as you saw in the video in the beginning. It will rip through bosses, it will eat them up. Our secondary is Hanagami because it will give you plus 20 on me just by having them together and getting more tea utensils never hurt anyone very very nice combo on the secondary as you know you can put whatever you want hidden tea house Toyotomi is your clan And I'm going to explain why. Except for the fact that it is by far the most popular right now. It gives you 10% Amrita loot bonus plus 10% anytime you absorb Amrita to level up or use in any other way. And life recovery of 20 on your initial week of using the clan that will improve in the next two weeks if you stay with the clan. That means that your chest piece... Amrita Absorption Healing will go hand to hand with this and will go hand to hand with every perk on the Siftling Tree that gives you health whenever you perform burst counters, whenever you use active Yokai abilities, whenever you touch a Soul Core. This will all progressively be unlocked here. For the weapon perks, finally, each tree has an extension that gives you maximum key increases and lower damage every time your health gets low. Those two are the most important and you 
must exhaust them as soon as possible. For the rest of the usage, whatever works for you, a staple skill of the Switchglaive is the Rakshasa here, that will increase your anima when you attack an enemy. Very, very good, and it is the only active buff you can have on it. Active buff meaning the one you can cast by unlocking it in the skill tree. And of course, the Wildfire Flux. I will be making a video on Wildfire Flux. It's the most important thing of using a Switch Glaive, and sadly, it's very complicated. For the rest of the weapons, I'll, go, I'll not go into great detail because they're supplementary, as I said. So this is it guys, my very first build for Neo 2, Genma. It is a general play build. You do not have to be super optimal to use it to be effective. And it is a build that still allows you to, you know, play the game. I have utmost respect for all the people who cooked all those early builds of Surik and Spam and so on and so forth, like in Neo 1. I appreciate what they're doing for the community, but that's not fun for me it's not fun for me to just be standing around and throwing shuriken at enemies okay so this is a build that allows you to play the game be in the thick of it and be super powerful and effective on a last note the spells you should be using are as follows and you will have enough skill points to unlock them if you did a good initial playthrough getting all the locks of here Sloth and Weakness to debuff your enemies. Quick Change to survive fatal injuries and Sneak Thief to be able to go and get your Guardian Spirit if you fall without trouble. Those are the only ninjutsu we will be using. Protection to just avoid a large chunk of damage and with your powerful magic this will be very very strong barrier. Pleiades and Extraction to be getting Amrita all the time, never having to heal and maximum out your Amrita gauge and getting a ton of Amrita. And Carnage. Carnage gives you a ton of attack by sacrificing some defense. The Soul Purge I have here is just for experimentation. Don't bother with it if you don't want to experiment the way I do. And with it we're done. I hope you liked what you saw here. I'm open to any questions you might have. You can post them in the comment section below i'm covering everything in neo 2 guys so sub like and share until next time be well stay frosty and always strive for perfection cheers